summertime and the living's easy. We on the microphone with Ross MG. People only dance, we'll agree that we qualified to represent LBC. The fireside chat you see runs the party, dance to the rhythm, it gets harder. This relationship, baby. Love Tori so bad, she treats me like on lockdown, like a penitentiary. Spreads a loving over so thin, none left for me. Summertime, and the living's easy. Benny on the microphone, we're out, say I'm G. People on the dance will really agree that we will qualify. Represent LBC, see me and Jeffrey gonna run to the party, dance to the rhythm, make it harder. It gets harder. Take this big bear off my eyes. My burning sun will someday rise. What am I gonna be doing for a while? I'll play all by myself. Showing how to keep this love off the shelf. Summertime. Summertime, yeah. you cry of one of those moments you're gonna rise up singing you're gonna spread your wings and take to the sky till that morning ain't nothing gonna harm you but with that young man may stare and by with that young man may stare and by With daddy and mammy to take a trip, trip, trip with me, me and my girl got this relationship. Me and my girl got this relationship. Me and me, me, me. This me and my girl got this relationship. Me and my girl got this relationship. Yeah, me and my girl got this. Me and me.
Singing songs about the Southland. I'm this old Alabama once again. I think it's a sin. I heard old Neil Young sing about her. I heard old Neil's putting down. I hope Neil Young and Tory remember. Southern man. Those Canadians around anyhow. Come on now, sweet oh Alabama. Oh, where those stars are so blue, skies are blue, skies are blue. Sweet oh Alabama. Oh, Lord, Lord I'm coming home to you. for tuning in here we've got sketch up fireside chats my name is ben hammond i'll be here every week starting, week starting things, things off. off and i'll see and you all I'll... next time it's sketchup's 3d base camp fireside chat series here's the lay of the land before we get started if you run into choppy video or sound click get audio video help down here and enable compatibility mode you'll end up with a slight delay, but a buttery, smooth stream. You can participate over on this side by asking our guests a question, answering the occasional poll, or just joining in on the chat. And in the middle, you'll see relevant links that'll change as our show goes along. Today's guest for the program is woodworker Jeff Branch. And now, your hosts, Aaron Dietzen and Tori Hassan. Hey everybody, welcome and uh, thank you for hanging out with us. This is going to be fun. This is the Fireside Chat. This is season two, episode two. Fireside Chat is where we take webinars and spin them on their head. We take a little entertainment, we take some education, we take a lot of SketchUp, mix it all together and serve it to you once a week, every Wednesday. This season, we're doing a little thing, a little different from last season. We're doing fresh faces of SketchUp. So these are new people that we have come across mostly through Instagram and we're introducing to you along with hopefully some knowledge. And speaking of new, Tori stuck around for another week. So week two, Tori, welcome. Thanks, Aaron. Glad to be here. I feel a little bit less green this time, but you know, definitely still getting the hang of things. I'm still here at home calling in from my home office. Haven't, haven't made it back in yet. Hope, hopefully soon, because uh, 
it'll be nice. It, it's uh, it's stuff starting to open up, so hopefully so. Um, but you know, that's a good that's a good thought. Uh, let's we'd love to find out where you guys are dialing in from. So, are you in a home office? Are you just at home? Is it, is it evening? You're relaxing. Um, let us know where you are connecting from. We'd love to love to hear how the situation is where you're working or watching from. Personally, I hope that some of you are at the beach <laughs> or yeah. somewhere cool. <laughs> I don't know. I, I have mixed feelings. Like if you're at the beach, should you be watching this? Because I feel like you get a pass. Fair. Like, if you're at a beach, <laughs> I'm okay with you watching the recording. Maybe, no, you know what? Connect, then just put the phone down and enjoy the beach. So that way we still get the view. You know, that's cool. Yeah. M multitask. Multitask. Yes. <laughs> well, while everybody's looking at the poll, I want to tell you a little bit about our guest today, Aaron. Mm -hmm. We have got Jeff joining us today from Alabama. And thank you, Ben, for that lovely rendition of Sweet Home Alabama in his honor. That was pretty great. I, I don't remember a line about Canadians being in the original Sweet Home Me Alabama. neither. But, yeah, you know, lyrics. Yeah. I, I appreciate the nod. <laughs> it's as close as I'm ever going to come to having a song written about me. So I'll take it. That's good. I'll take it. So Jeff, as you've probably figured out from the title, is a woodworker, a longtime woodworker, who discovered SketchUp in the late 2000s, at which point he started using it to create really incredible woodworking plans for his customers. And today he is going to take us through his workflow for finding high quality materials that let him create really realistic SketchUp models. That's going to be a good one. I'm, I'm excited about this because uh, if you haven't checked out Jeff, it's worth taking a peek at his Instagram. Um, just exceptional models, great materials, good, just good stuff. Good SketchUp. So uh, it's yeah. going to be nice to learn a little more about how he makes them. He makes some really awesome stuff. All right. Let's uh, let's take a quick peek at the polls because it looks like I'm not too surprised. But it looks like a majority, more than half of you are dialing in from the home office, just like Tori and I. Ooh, we did get two votes from a beach somewhere and one in a cabin in the woods. I'm assuming that's Luis. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Luis is back from his house in the forest. <laughs> so, this is good. Uh, I'm living vicariously through all of you then. Enjoy yeah, your exotic locations nice. for us. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, I can see someday, someday in the near future, joining from our office once it opens back up. But I think it's going to be a long time before we get to stream from the beach. So that's Probably. like a bug. It does. I don't think I'm ready to carry the green screen and all of the equipment out there yet. Yeah, not not quite yet. Um, hey, so we're going to do something. This is going to be a fun thing. You know, we try to try to keep the learning going and, and we like to teach SketchUp, but we like to also mix it up a little bit, teach some other stuff. So we're doing woodworking. or That's the theme today. Um, we're not going to do any. It was hard to get a whole lot of woodworking tools up here into my home office. So we're not going to do that, but uh, we're going to do micro woodworking or do a little quick whittling. So um, despite being from the Great White North, I found out Tori has never whittled anything before. So it's just never come up somehow. I don't know. That's weird. So um, I've done a little bit. I teach, taught my kids a little bit. So I figured we'll just spend a couple minutes and talk about the basics of whittling. So we're going to start with we need a piece of wood. All right. I got one. Tori's got a piece of wood. All right. And next thing we need is a knife. I have just a little, this is just a Mora knife. It's like a, I don't know, 550, 560, something like that. But, you know, it's a good sharp blade and uh, strong. So what, we got something along those lines that you can use too, Tori? Um, let me take a look. It doesn't look exactly like yours. Is that? No, no, no? it doesn't. <laughs> Unless we're carving butter, you're probably going to be out of luck with that knife. Okay. So what else do you got? Let's make something Fair a little bigger. A little bigger than that? Um, all right, yeah. I've got one that's a little bigger. This kind of the right have, size? You may have overshot. That that may be too big. That might too be too far the other way. Too that's a thumb way. removal tool. Yeah. Okay, then let's uh we're gonna fold Goldilocks it. This is this is my medium, medium size. Perfect. That's the one. That is that's perfect. Okay. Awesome. All right. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your, your knife, solid okay. in your hand. You're always gonna cut away from you. You're gonna start by taking this piece of wood right here, and we're gonna start by like just carving away and taking the bark off, just long, smooth strokes. Pull that off there until, until you get, you know, get to this piece right here. You know, it's like that the okay. outside is gone. That's yeah, you're, you're I'm going. Getting, I'm getting there, right? Right, that's right. Now okay. we're gonna get into some details. So again, always carve away from you. 
So you're going to push down into the wood, pull up. What you could do is kind of chase the shape you're trying to make with it. Uh, if you need to, you can, you know, you can push down a little bit to cut in. If you need to use a tip, you can't, you know, detail that kind of thing. You can use that tip. Again, hold the base like this and a poke always away from you. Don't cut towards yourself. That's, that's a dumb thing, but we're going to go in and just a little, a little more off the top. And there's just a quick, I mean, it's a quick carving. So I only had what, like 30 seconds. So it's not ideal. It's not the best I've ever done, but you get an idea of the kind of thing you can can do if you know what you're doing. So um, let's you see know, what you got. You, did you get I think something? I agree with the people in the comments there that you were cheating. <laughs> well, just because I've done it before doesn't mean I'm <laughs> cheating. Well, it's either that or I think I'm going to have to admit that maybe I'm not cut out for this. <laughs> Ooh, you cut you cut something. I did yeah. cut something. <laughs> and you know, I have definitely failed at my first attempt at whittling, but I'm hoping that we've got some people in the audience that maybe are a little bit better at it than I am. So there's another poll in there and I want you guys to let me know, are you a first time complete novice woodworker like me? Are you a weekender like Aaron or are you full Ron Swanson like our guest today, Jeff? Let us know in the poll down there while I go and lick my wounds here. Yeah. Keep your, keep, keep your, keep the blood off the mouse. <laughs> yeah. That's your part. Well, we've, uh, we've introed Jeff quite a bit at this point. So I think it's probably about time to just bring Jeff branch up on stage with us. So, uh, yeah, you guys fill out the poll and welcome Jeff branch, our guest this week. Hey, there he is. Hey Jeff. Thanks for what? joining us. It's uh, great to have you. Yeah. So you you've probably done a little whittling. You've you've cut wood with a knife before too. I'm assuming. I have, but not a lot. I mean, you're you're. Uh, I need to take lessons from you, Aaron. Oh, it's it's nothing. Somebody with a 3D printer and some wood colored paint couldn't do themselves. <laughs> Did so, he uh, says. <laughs> anyhow, uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get into uh, your presentation in a little bit, but first we wanted to interview, get to know you a little bit. So uh, we had a couple questions. I think Tori's gonna go ahead and kick it off with a question for you. We do. So obviously, you are way ahead of probably both of us in the woodworking department. Hold, hold on, I, I gotta say, way ahead. I made a total mistake and missed <laughs> something very, very important. I'm sorry. I was so excited. <laughs> about getting Jeff up on stage. I skipped over something that's super important. Um, Jeff I think I know gonna, what it is. Yeah, just to give us a presentation <laughs> a few minutes and you're going to want to pay very close attention to that because uh, once Jeff is done, he's going to ask us a trivia question and the trivia question is going to be about his presentation. If you pay attention, you're the first one to answer, you're going to get a very special, very, very awesome prize. Tell us about the prize, Tori. L love the music, love the music. Production so, all about Oh it. yeah, oh yeah, very, very high. So today's prize is super cool in my opinion. Jeff is going to be giving away eight of his individual word working plans that he normally sells on his Etsy store. Total value of almost $120. So if any of you woodworkers out there see his work and love what you see today, make sure that you're quick on the draw with the answer to that trivia question. Small reminder, if you won a prize in a previous episode this season, you can't win again, but maybe you can help somebody else out in getting their answer quickly. And it also says here in the notes that you can't win if you're a host. Did you add that? Is that new? Because no but i kept making jokes about how i was going to try to win so i think maybe our uh, our sketchup helpers behind the scenes put that in there as a reminder that i can't take the prize home i guess not oh well Shoot. i guess it'll still be good for somebody uh so i apologize for not doing that earlier <laughs> <laughs> i got excited i'm sorry so anyhow hey. let's uh, uh let's let's continue with that question you were doing before i so rudely interrupted with what i was supposed to have said before it's all right I mean, I'd be flattered. Jeff, you're an exciting guy. We really wanted to get you up here. <laughs> 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 but 
But okay, let's uh, let's find out a little bit more about you. So we all know that you are pretty great at woodworking at this point, but I know that I'm curious to know how you got into it. What was it that drew you towards woodworking all those years ago? Well, I've been around woodworking growing up and my dad uh, has been a woodworker pretty much all his life. And so I was around it growing up and uh, my wife suggested that I take we were dating then, but my wife suggested that I take a class at college on woodworking. So I was able to take a semester long class on uh, basic woodworking and um, was an awesome way to start. And as a uh, once we got married as as newlyweds, I just continued uh, to do woodworking. We needed furniture for our apartment and then our home. And here we are 38 years later and, and I have a house full of furniture I've made. Wow. Whereas um, I went to Ikea to furnish my first apartment. <laughs> Here we've got Jeff making it all himself. <laughs> I love that idea of, I mean, that's, that's a marriage meant to be right there. Like, don't worry, honey, we don't have any furniture. We don't have much, but I got a saw. I got this. I got this. <laughs> that's, I mean, serious. We were uh, both looking at our college course uh, classes and she says, Hey, maybe you should try this. So, a lot of props to my wife. Fantastic. That's awesome. She, she was investing in your future way in advance. Right. Little did she know. <laughs> Have you seen the prices of furniture lately? <laughs> Which is more uh, power tools. Yeah. More power. <laughs> oh yeah, that offsets it, huh? Um, so, so what? Uh, so we came across your work, um, a, a lot of your work on Instagram. What was it that made you get into? posting Instagram. I mean, you've been making, like you said, you've been woodworking for years. You've been using SketchUp for quite a while. What made you decide to take those pictures, the SketchUp models and put them out there uh, on social media? Well, to me, Instagram is a great platform. There's a lot of things that I see on Instagram that from both a woodworking perspective, uh, it's very inspiring. I get a lot of creativity from just seeing what other people do. And there's also a lot of good, uh, SketchUp users that post stuff to Instagram. And, um, you know, it's just something that I enjoy doing. I like to post the, the things that I do on Instagram and um, also my woodworking projects. That's awesome. Well, you've created a, a great channel to scroll through. I mean, there's there's some good looking stuff. If you like SketchUp or you like woodworking, it's, it's multifunction. Very much yeah, so. Yeah, there's something there for everyone. I'm kind of curious, Jeff, as somebody who is obviously very much at the beginning of their woodworking career, <laughs> I, I'm sure that you've improved over time as we all would, but was there ever something that you, where you kind of bit off more than you could chew, something that turned into be a, a much bigger challenge than you anticipated, or just a, maybe a design problem that you oh, got into and were like, this is going to be... Oh, That's sorry. almost every every project. I once <laughs> built a eight foot tall, five foot wide bookcase for a client. It was the first thing I did of that size, and just the the size of this project made it very difficult to do, very challenging. And that was one I definitely bit off too much. But uh, these days, you know, I try to keep my projects that I make uh, kind of um, on kind of the smaller side. Nothing, you know, massive. And that helps a lot. And, uh, you know, just have to know your limitations um, and um, kind of stay out of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> well, having seen some of the stuff you've built, I think your limitations are probably not very significant at this point. <laughs> well, thank you. So obviously you've when you started woodworking, you weren't using SketchUp at the time. Um, and that's a tool you've added to your workflow over the years. What would you say is the biggest difference between now pre-designing all your work in SketchUp versus before when you did it like, you know, cavemen used to? <laughs> I used to design using graph paper and a pencil. So I would draw things to scale and I would get just a, a front elevation and side elevation and that kind of thing. So with SketchUp, to me, it's just really fits well with what I do. And it's something that I can make uh, very detailed um, you know, if you're doing it, uh, drawing it out on graph paper, the joinery is something that you can't get very precise with SketchUp. I can draw all the joinery. It's almost like making my furniture project ahead of time in the computer. 
So it's something that I think once I've gotten used to it, it would be impossible for me to go back and do it the, the old way. So it just became an extension of what I do. It's a very important tool when I'm in the workshop and uh, it, it fits what I do very well. That's awesome. That's awesome. These interviews are going well, Aaron, because I'm getting new taglines every week. This time it's, I would never go back <laughs> to the old way. It's marketing gold right here. I know, <laughs> this is perfect. Good thing it's recorded. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm a little curious because I don't know. Honestly, I would not be able to pick out a specific type of wood if you paid me, other than to tell you that it's either dark or light in color. Mm -hmm. But do you have a favorite favorite style that you want to work in, or a favorite type of wood? The wood I like mostly. I mean. Uh, Corson white oak, where you get the really pretty uh, medullary rays and and the figure that it, that you get with Corson white oak. Uh, I recently used walnut, and it's a beautiful wood. It has some deep, um, almost pinkish browns and purpley uh, tones in it. And cherry's a beautiful wood. I've used tiger maple, and um, because of that, you know, I've searched for all these materials online so that. Uh, my SketchUp models are um, accurate in that way. That's that's a step up. I mean, if if we uh, if we glance over at our poll, so we asked uh, everybody's level of woodworking knowledge, and we have uh, forty four percent are calling themselves novices. About a third say weekend warriors, and uh, just over twenty would say they are Ron Swansons like yourself. Um, I think wood selection is probably one of those. I think what sets uh, I once referred to pine as being fancy. Um, <laughs> you can do some great things with like, pine. Not to disrespect pine, but uh, <laughs> I was asked once, how can I make my woodworking better? And it was literally using better, better materials, better wood. That's probably that's probably what that's probably the, the leap from weekend warrior to actually calling yourself a woodworker. To calling sure. yourself Ron Swanson. I think the the only thing I know about pine is a quote from the show New Girl, where they say that it's the wood of poor people. So even yeah. I knew that that was <laughs> bottom it's also of the, the wood of cheap people. Okay, Tori. Jeez. Same same thing. Well, that's a, there's a little truth to that, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, wood. I'd say wood right now in, across the board is for the uh, the, the spendy people. So yeah. So, so one last question um, that we had. Uh, and you can't answer SketchUp for this. We'll assume your answer is SketchUp, and then then we'll. This will be the second one. But what is your favorite number one tool? Probably my table saw, just because it's um, I use it so much. You know, it does so many things. I can cut material accurately with it, and um, so it is my favorite. And I've gotten into hand tool woodworking, like hand planes. Mm -hmm. um, those are very uh, satisfying to use when they're when you're using them well. So, but uh, I'd have to say my table saw. That's a good solid core mm -hmm. piece of machinery to build. It, it is. It's a good number two answer. So SketchUp and then yeah, table saw. SketchUp and table saw. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> You know, uh, you actually kind of alluded to this by accident, Jeff, because you didn't know what we were going to be doing. But do you think that you'd be ready to play a game with us? I think so. All, give right. It a All right. So it is game time. <laughs> and today's game is actually going to be in reference to a comment you made about joinery earlier on. We're playing a game called Make That Connection. <gasps> Oh, All right. <laughs> okay, Jeff. So the way this is going to work, uh, <laughs> we're going to give you a connection. We're going to show two pieces of wood being joined together, and you have to tell us what the name of this connection is. So we're going to start pretty simply here. Uh, you'll probably knock this one out fairly quickly. It's a pretty pretty common connection, but if you had two pieces of wood that joined something like this, what do you think you'd call that joint? Um, I would probably call that a mortise and tenon joint. Close. What we were looking for is <laughs> rabbit joint. 
Do you get, get, get the game? Get the connection? Get the, get the, see that? Yeah, oh, actually, we're working on multiple levels here. <laughs> so that was our rabbit joint. Okay. Right. So now that you know, remember, yeah. we don't know what we're doing. We're not like you. So when mm -hmm. we hear rabbit joints, this we think there's really rabbit joints. Joint. Yeah. Yes. If you in the chat want to help Jeff out, feel free to throw out your answers. Uh, he's allowed to pull the crowd. That is totally. Yes. Cool. You have a phone a friend option with this. <laughs> in fact, your friends will be screaming at you, but you can ignore. <laughs> All right. Next one. Let's try one more. Or no, let's try several more. Let's try another one. All right. If you had two pieces that joined in a shape like this, what would you call this connection? The index finger joint. That's right. <laughs> yes. I got finger that. Finger joint. You got it. <laughs> putting it putting it together. I think you got it now, Jeff. I think you've caught on. All right. What about something like this guy right here? Just slid that little in there. In there. That would have to be tree. a biscuit. Which has, uh... Oh, he said it. He said yeah. it. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's a biscuit right there. Biscuit <laughs> oh, and it just keeps getting better, guys. I wish no. they really looked like this. Uh, it would be nice. All right. Here's a rough one. This was uh this is is we can uh, again lean on some help for this one, but if you had a connection look like this, I got some extra lines in there. Hold on. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna look at the I'm gonna look at the comments here. Yeah, feel feel free to help them out. This one might be the toughest on. one we have. <laughs> you notice I said you all want to ask that question. Oh, it looks like we've stumped the crowd too. <laughs> Shark Close. joint. Yes, I'll, I'll give you joint. these little things are meant to be teeth. Oh, Dave. We got one. We got one. Tongue groove. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of connections that don't make the pun into the physical. Yeah. So we, had to, we had to choose there. All right. I'm thinking, I'm thinking too much about the All right. So <laughs> if I had a connection like this, I'm assuming this is a pretty standard connection. It's a dovetail joint. Boom. <laughs> yes, it is. That is a dovetail. All right. And finally, one last. <laughs> a bird joint. Is a bird joint a thing? Okay. <laughs> Moving on. Our last one. If you had a connection that looked like this, what would you call it? It's a butt joint. That is absolutely right. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Oh, thank you everybody Nailed for playing. It. That was, that was yes. so cool. <laughs> Thank you for all the help in the chat. <laughs> and thank you for giving me the opportunity to model a two by four with a butt. That was new. <laughs> I modeled a lot of things. That was, that's something new. Aaron had a lot of fun prepping for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. I think we are about ready to hand the floor over to you, Jeff, and give you a chance to start your presentation. Just a reminder to everybody in the crowd, remember the ask a question box down at the bottom. If you have anything that comes to mind during Jeff's presentation, put it in there. If you see someone else's question that you really want answered, remember to upvote it. And the chat is going to be active the whole time. So our moderators will be in there. Make sure to give Jeff some love. That's right, and we're and gonna we're gonna let Tori finish. No, That's you cool. go. I'm good. <laughs> well, then we're good. Let's do this. Yeah, let's. We're gonna hand the stage over to Jeff now, and he's gonna talk talk us through his presentation. Highly detailed and realistic textures. Take it away, Jeff. Wow, that was a lot of clapping you got there. <laughs> it was. We're very excited. Apparently so. All right. So the um, title of the presentation is Finding and Using High Quality Materials, SketchUp for Woodworkers. A uh, little bit about my background is I've been a woodworker for 38 years. Uh, I have always designed my own furniture. And, of course, SketchUp has become important for that. 
I began using SketchUp in 2009 and I began using SketchUp Pro and Layout in 2015. And let me hide this thing right here. I have created about 30 woodworking plans. I do woodworking plans for myself. Um, I provide them free on my website. I sell these on Etsy and I provide professional woodworking plans for others. What you see here in this picture is one of my recent woodworking projects. This is my Moravian workbench. And um, you can see the SketchUp model of it uh, below, just give you an idea of what I do with materials. And um, I do woodworking plans. So this is uh, one of the ones I've done. And as you can see here, I like to use uh, a lot of um, um, attention getting visuals, a lot of big images, and I use SketchUp for this. And then I do have a website where I use SketchUp to illustrate the uh, blog posts. So since I use SketchUp as an illustration tool, using accurate materials in my SketchUp models is important. And uh, so the next question is where do I get these materials? So finding and using high quality materials, I have three main sources for these. Uh, the one that I use the most is online images. Uh, second uh, option would be for photos that I'm actually taking of lumber. And then I also get materials from the 3D warehouse. So let's take a look at each of these ways to obtain images for wood materials. So again, online image searches, this is literally where I go out to Google and type in, in this case, tiger maple lumber image. And um, I'll just kind of look and see what is available. And just to give you an idea of what I look for, what works well, um, what I look for are um, rectangular images. Uh, some of these that are square when you apply them to your SketchUp model and you have to manipulate them to fill a board, for example, these square images are not going to work well. I also want uh, what I would call parallel images. You know, in SketchUp, there's perspective views and there's parallel views. Um, what you want for materials are the parallel views. Uh, perspective views like this image here are not gonna work. This is perspective. Mm -hmm. This one, even these uh, across the bottom, uh, this one and this one might be usable, but a lot of times pictures like this are not. Uh, but these are gonna be your better um, options. The one thing also to be um, aware of is how light affects the image. So if you have part of the image that's very light and part of it this is dark, that's gonna be challenging. You can see that same thing here where the right side of this board is light and the left side is dark. Just uh, quick, Jeff, does, uh, does resolution play a big part in this? Like do you look at images and go, okay, that one's, once I stretch it out, that's going to be too low resolution. Or do you find that most of the stuff you find online is high enough resolution you can use it for a model? Most of it is high enough. You know, some of the things I've created myself will be, uh, you know, they'll look blurry. So just about anything I get online is going to be usable. If it's a large image, I do use um, Material Resizer is an extension I use to kind of bring those image sizes down. So most any image though is gonna be sufficient. Um, the things that you wanna stay away from also are just extreme close-ups of images. You can see here this light source is messing up the color. Um, I actually selected this image a number of years ago. And for example, I applied it to this SketchUp model. Wow. So this is an That's example of cool. how you can take an image of a specific species, in this case, almost an exotic wood, at least it is to me, and apply it to your SketchUp model. You'll also notice that this image is fairly orange in color. And I used, in this case, the editor within the materials pane to adjust the color to make it look more natural. So I thought I'd do a case study of two images. What you see here on the top is a uh, image I got from the internet and this is cherry and i consider this to be a good image and the one below it is supposed to be oak um, and i'm considering it a fair image what i did is downloaded the image and saved it to my materials folder on my computer and you can see here what's good about this image first of all it's rectangular and that's really what you want because you know it's kind of the same shape as lumber is 
Um, this image has even color except for a small area at the bottom of this board. And also the grain is not too loud. So I applied it to this model. And again, I used the um, editor within the materials pane to adjust the color to be more like aged cherry. And I thought this was a very successful use of this image. This is the other board. And probably the biggest problem is the color changes a lot along the length of the board. And what I will often do on a panel is I will divide a panel into three faces just to help me control the material better. And I just could not get a good look out of this image on the side of this hutch. And you can see here, I'll try to flip boards to kind of break up the pattern repeat. Mm. And it was just hard to do. So I'm calling this I mean, this, this looks okay, but it's really not what I'm looking for for um, a material. Okay, so when you, when you do that, Jeff, is there is there ever times where that's an advantage to make something look more, I mean, wood's not perfect, right? You have grains, you have uh, imperfections and, and that sort of thing. Is there times where that can be a good thing because you can use the same picture on multiple pieces to make it look like it's more than one piece? Or is it, do you pretty much shoot for everything like ideal to be the same and then not have to worry about that sort of changes? No, actually, if you notice here on this board, there's a little color change here. You can see that here and here, hmm. it's also here. So actually a little bit of color change is good because you don't want your model just to look like you painted it with a brown color. You know, right. you want people to know that it's wood and wood, like you say, Aaron, wood will, um, it's natural for it to change color. And that's like in this example, I just let it repeat on this panel and it's not terrible. Um, this would be the look you would get if you were to glue two boards together, it's possible to have it look that way. So I thought this was a fair use of the material. Uh, just to recap though, on online images, um, what works well are rectangular images because that's really the, the shape of lumber. You want a flat parallel view, you want even light as much as possible you want natural grain. And I put patience here because some of it is trial and error. You'll download a material, apply it to your SketchUp model, and it may not look good. Uh, things to avoid square images. Sometimes square images do work, but in general, they're not going to because you'll have to enlarge them a lot. It'll not look natural. Uh, perspective view of boards are uh, to be avoided. Uneven light and just really crazy grain, odd grain. Um, in this um, example, what we're talking about here is actually taking actual photos of lumber. This is the first time I did this. This is a uh, bedside table that I built a number of years ago. And this image on the right is a picture of this side panel. What I did is I later created a woodworking plan and I needed a SketchUp model. And I thought, you know, I'd heard that you could do this. I took this picture and applied it. And this is the result from that. Uh, one thing you'll notice in this image is that the light source is over here. So this is not ideal, but in this example, I thought it actually ended up working pretty good. So I haven't done that in a while. I went to uh, my local home center. Some of you may recognize this as Home Depot. And I literally stood in the aisle and I got my cell phone out and took a picture of it. You know, I didn't get too many odd looks or anything. Um, no, it's normal. They're used to people coming in to take photos of boards. They're used there to just coming in and taking photos. Of <laughs> there were two guys in the aisle when I did this. They did not. They did not even look up. So it's okay to do that. Um, <laughs> what you'll notice here is that the right lumber has this big figure right here, and that was something that I immediately rejected. This board, after cropping it and kind of doctoring it up a little bit, I used Paint.net to. Uh, do my photo editing is this piece of wood here. I actually had to even look out the light, which you see this end is lighter than the bottom. There's some stuff on this board. There's some dirt right here. So you do have to do a little bit of photo editing, but I think the result in SketchUp actually is really good. Um, I actually created two materials for this model. I darkened one just uh, slightly and applied it. And I was actually very, um, surprise at how good it looked. And this is meant to be a rustic uh, piece of furniture. 
So a recap of photos of wood. The best way to get lumber shaped images is to take pictures of lumber. Uh, flat parallel views are going to be your friend. You want adequate even light, which sometimes is hard to do in a home center. Uh, wide boards are better since you have to crop the image to get to get uh, out the perspective view, I guess, out of the image. Uh, the things you'll have challenges with are, again, lighting, getting a parallel view. And if you're not really good with photo editing, these things often require photo editing afterwards. Well, that's that's how you could get them to look at your ears when you walk in with your full lighting rig and <laughs> <laughs> I need even light on the board. I'm not going to buy. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's take a look at how to apply some of these images and turn them into materials. So what we'll do first, you want to make your um, material pane open. This is often what it will look like. And what I'm going to do is add the secondary selection pane. And to get started, I'm going to click on this little button here, which says create material. And I'm gonna call this material Maple Light. And I've got a file folder within SketchUp that I keep all my materials in. This is actually gonna be bird's eye maple. And I'm gonna make the size of this. This image is oriented left to right. So we're gonna to come to the left to right um, box. And I'm gonna make this 40 inches wide. We don't really care about this one. This dimension. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to double click this component, open it for editing, and I'm going to paint just this face. And then I'm going to take a look by right clicking it and coming down to texture and position. I'm going to look at the position of the material on the component. And I'm going to just align one edge with uh, the edge of this component as best as possible. Spacebar takes that away. Then I'm going to triple click this component, B for paint bucket tool. I'm going to sample this face and I'm going to paint the rest of the component. And I'm not going to zoom in on this, but what is happening is this face, the image on this face is going to flow to the adjacent faces. And by doing that, I've painted the whole component. All right, let's do this apron because it needs to be the same color. I'm going to, this is also the sample paint tool. I'm going to sample the edge of this board because I know this material is oriented correctly. I'm going to paint that. I'm going to right click it and bring up the position of the material, which this looks good, space bar. And then I'm going to triple click selecting this component B for paint bucket tool, or you could literally just go up here and uh, select the selection tool or the uh, paint sample tool, and I'm going to paint the rest of that component. So you are an advocate of components, I would say. I am. I know, I know Dave is watching right now, and Dave's like, yep. <laughs> because uh, you, you know, all of these are copies of the same component. Um, I've just gotten used to use them, using them that way. A component like one of the extensions I use is the cut list extension and components are um, important for that. So yeah, I'm big on components. All right, let's create a second material and I'm going to call this maple dark. If I can spell it correctly. All right, I know from past experience to get a dark color, I need to use these color values and that will give me my nice dark color I want. I'm going to leave the um, size uh, alone and again I'm using the exact same image as the first material and I'm going to paint this component or this face and I'm going to bring this over here and position it spacebar triple click paint bucket tool, sample that. And then I've got that material painted. I'm actually going to paint this one. We'll sample this face. Then I'm going to sample that and finish up the component. 
So, so one of the things I've heard people talk about when they do this this sort of work is with components is well now they all look the same, but you're saying that for for what you're doing your purposes that's okay. It's okay that the two boards next to each other on the bottom look the same. That's works. Well, you don't worry about doing it. Yeah, what I'm doing here is I am kind of trying to pick some material mm -hmm. that is not as prominent. Okay. And you can see most of that is even colored. Mm -hmm. So it can be a challenge if you are dealing with something that's a very pronounced grain. Okay. But that's two colors from one image. And uh, what we can do, what also is very important, is we want to save this material to our wood folder. And that's as easy as dragging and dropping it into your wood folder. And you can see both of these materials here. Now I can use this for any SketchUp model I want to in the future. That's so right. when people want to know how I get materials, the important part is being able to save them easily in your wood folder so that you can use them later. All That's right. Good. How are we doing on time? Uh, we're good. Got a couple more minutes. Okay. All right. So, Aaron, for what you're mentioning is I'm going to bring in a material. This is the same material I use uh, from the home center. And I'm going to color this. Well, what I do to kind of break up a face is I will divide it into or break up a component. I'll divide it into multiple faces here. I have drawn lines across this tabletop and I have divided this face. I've hidden these lines and I'm going to apply this material here. Oops. Hang on. We're going to make this about 40 inches. 40 inches this way. All right, so this is what I want. And I'm gonna triple click this paint bucket tool, Alt to sample it. And then this gets me my material flowing across this component. Uh, because it repeats like it does, and the, because I've divided this component into several different faces, we can actually adjust this to where we can get a more natural look to our tabletop. So you're just adjusting one board at a time. Right. And so you end up with something that looks like this. I could also adjust this. And to me, for a photo I took at Home Depot, this looks pretty good. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Don't discount the fact that you can use your camera. Um, this is something that I was very surprised how how good it worked. And then I'm going to drag and drop this and save this into uh, my wood folder as well. All right, a couple of examples. And so I've gone through a lot of steps here. One of the things that you can do if you want to remember all these different tips is to simply go to SketchUp's blog. It's at blog.sketchup.com. A couple of years ago, three years ago, I wrote an article for them. Uh, all you need to do is type in uh, Jeff Branch in the search bar. This article will appear. And it's got not only um, the article, but there's a link to a SketchUp video called the Texture Tweaker. That's really good. And then actually I'm linking to an article that Dave Richards wrote for fineworking.com, which goes into a lot more detail on how to manage materials and use them. Uh, remember, the 3D Warehouse is a good source for materials. I've listed a couple of uh, collections here that are very good. And then in my own 3D Warehouse, I've got uh, a lot of the models that you've seen in here. There's, uh, It's as easy as downloading, though, these boards. You can download these boards, um, Curly Maple, Cherry, Dark Oak, and save them the same way to your wood folder and use them on any SketchUp model. That's awesome. And that's about it. Uh, my website is jeffbranch.wordpress.com. I'm on Instagram at Jeff O'Branch. And again, my 3D warehouse uh, profile is Jeff Branch or Jeff B. 
And I uh, want to say a huge thank you to SketchUp for inviting me and for all of you tuning in. I appreciate it very much. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, we appreciate you joining us. Yeah, thank you for joining us. And I know that the next time I try to make a model, I'm going to be going to your 3D warehouse account first thing. <laughs> you've, you've done all the work. That's <laughs> That's a lot of that is something that, you know, I don't even use like I should. I, I, there's a lot of materials on the 3D warehouse. So a lot of these things, though, that I've collected will save a lot of time and and maybe even some frustration trying to find images online. Well, we, we do, we've had people a lot of times ask like, why don't, why don't we include more of those kind of textures in the default SketchUp? Um, and I think you just answered it. Cause this is, I mean, you have all the textures of things in the world that might get modeled. It'd be pretty hard for us to do all of them, but you just did a great job of making, showing how easy it is to get the perfect textures for what you actually want to use. So, um, well, that's perfect. One of the things I didn't touch is, you know, the, the uh, original, I think it's original cherry wood uh, material in SketchUp that mm -hmm. repeat well. So there are some good things about uh, the materials that come with SketchUp. Um, that's that's real important sometimes. Yeah, I, I do. One of the things I, I do like that red cherry wood, but not as it is. I like to stretch it, make it. It's, it almost has like a wavy look to it. But if you stretch it out, it looks more like. <laughs> It can almost look like an exotic wood. It does. It does. It <laughs> I would never pay for it to ruin. So, yeah, fancy wood. <laughs> fancy wood. Um, all right. So, right now, before we do have a bunch of questions, can we Q and A? Thank you guys. It's awesome questions. We're gonna ask Jeff those. But before we do that, we are gonna do the trivia question and giveaway. So, uh, one more time, Tori. What are we giving away today? Yes. As a reminder. This person is going to go home with a copy of all eight of Jeff's woodworking plans from his Etsy page. Each of those plans includes the original SketchUp model. So make sure you're the first one in the chat. And Jeff, could you please let them know what the trivia question is? What is the name of my workbench that I showed at the beginning of the presentation? Counting down. <laughs> this gonna give long. give it. No, I think you're good. We're just gonna give everyone a few seconds because those in compatibility mode might be a few seconds behind us here. Oh, we have the answers We're coming. Right oh, 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 got it. I see it. The first one we have Rafael Antonio, and your last name is cut off. I apologize. <laughs> I can't actually see the whole thing, but. <laughs> Raphael. Raphael got the right answer with a Moravian workbench. That's right. Very good. Thank you, Raphael, I and everyone else. To claim your prize, send an email with your name and your episode number to events at sketchup.com. The address is in the chat bar. But if you send your name over to them, then they will get you hooked up with your prize. And thank you again, Jeff, for the amazing prize. Thank you for having me. It's been a lot of fun. That's awesome. Good job, Raphael. All right, now we're going to a couple of questions. Um, I do want to just remind everybody about this too. Uh, we're going to get through as many questions as we can in the next couple of minutes. If your question doesn't get asked, um, it doesn't mean it's a bad question. You shouldn't feel bad about your questions. It just means we're running out of time. So as soon as we're done with this, Jeff will be going live on his Instagram page. So you want to follow him over there and you'll be able to ask additional questions or get some additional information from him live once we wrap up here, so. All right. Um, That's all right. First question we have up here, um, this is actually something I was wondering. Um, Kevin Williams, oh, Keggy. Keggy, you're messing with me by putting your real name up. How <laughs> long does the average model take for you to create once you have the design worked out? Um, I mean, it can, it can be um, an hour, couple of hours. I'm working on one right now where um, just very detailed and I will do these sometimes where I just do it to challenge myself, but it can be an hour. It could be three hours, you know. So, so, but I mean, really a couple hours. So you actually used to, I watched you texture that and I'm thinking if you weren't talking, you probably would have textured that, uh, that table in like 20 seconds. Didn't take long. 
No, I mean, you can actually, I will, um, I will copy materials that already have that uh, texture applied the way I want it to. And if I can just uh, push pull it to the right shape and, it, and the texture's already on there, that makes it easier. Nice. That's cool. I'm looking at these questions and I'm glad to see that actually, I think you answered quite a few of them in your presentation, which is awesome because people were, <laughs> were on track with what you were doing. But we got uh, our next popular question actually comes from our presenter last week, Luis. He wants to know where you get your design inspiration from. So aside from your commissions. Yeah, um, I try to find things that have some sort of visual, I call it um, just a little quirk to it, some visual interest. Um, but I uh, have been kind of interested more in modern uh, contemporary style furniture with a little bit of a um, craftsman kind of flair to it. I'm not really into craftsman furniture 100%, but um, I do like some of those um, attributes. But I get a lot of inspiration from Instagram. I follow, uh, in particular, Philip Morley and Mike Pekovich and Matt Kinney. There's just a number of people on Instagram, and I, I really can't stress enough how uh, Instagram gets my creative side going. That's awesome. Like that. it's, it's good to stay inspired by uh, people in the same realm as you, right? We can all we can all <laughs> each other as designers and and cross inspire. I don't know if that's a term. I just point <laughs> cross inspire each other. I think it works. I think it's good. It's I'm sure that you've got some people that would say the same about your Instagram page. So I think it's great that you well, all thank you. Thank you. work from each other. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, okay. Jeff, Sebastian is wondering if you ever use dynamic components here for creating parametric stuff. I have never used dynamic components. Um, yeah, I have not had the need uh, for, you know, any kind of visual like that, that you would get from dy dynamic components. Um, and that's what I'm assuming he's uh, talking about, but um, I tend to keep things pretty simple. Uh, I don't have a lot of, for example, uh, extensions that I use. So I try to keep it pretty simple. That works. Mm -hmm. I, th I think the fact that, that you, everything you make is custom. So I can see dynamic components, maybe not sliding right into your workflow, but uh, that makes sense because, uh, you well, know, it's probably something I need to explore more, but I just have not, have not gone, gone there. Yet. If it ain't broke, you know, <laughs> don't fix it. This one, we have a question from Matt Parks that's actually asking about the tools that you use for woodworking. And he was asking about the safety of it, but I'm going to reframe that a little bit and say, do you have suggestions for people who want to learn to use some of these tools in the appropriate way? Maybe they're just getting into woodworking. Well, in a lot of places, at least in the U.S., there are woodworking guilds. Um, some retail woodworking stores will provide um, woodworking classes um, and um, trade schools. But as far as learning woodworking and uh, staying safe, uh, a lot of it happens on uh, YouTube these days. And um, there are tools now designed, like there's a tool called SawStop, which uh, senses flesh. And so it immediately cuts itself off when um, it comes in contact with flesh. So, you know, there's things like that that help, but it is a dangerous uh, hobby. Uh, but, you know, you just have to respect your tools and um, um, keep safety in mind. And be okay if your fingers end up like Tori's. I still the have. I still They're have. all still there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. No, no missing fingers yet. That's, that's, right. that soft stop thing sounds both effective and terrifying. <laughs> you need to watch some slow motion videos of that thing getting. Ooh. No, I don't think I do. <laughs> it stops instantly. It is insane. It's it's an incredible yeah. safety tool. Mm -hmm. They're Good. expensive, though. Yes. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> yeah. And you, you use them once, I think. But um, uh, I did have a question. Um, I'm sorry. I, I won't murder your name. But somebody did ask about how you get your wood. Do you order it? Or do you go in and do you actually handpick every piece of wood you're going to use? I literally hand pick, hand pick every piece, but I do have uh, 
here in my area, two good sources for what I would call premium lumber, um, even some exotics. So that's just going into the lumber yard and picking my boards. I have ordered online before. There's a company called Bell Force Products, which I've used, and you do order. Uh, they actually will uh, let you handpick online some of your material. So, um, but I do tend to go locally and just actually look at lumber and try to find boards that have the right kind of grain. All right. You can you online shop for anything now. Yeah, it's true, but you never know what you're going to get. I mean, that's that's definitely, that could be a rough one. Yeah. <laughs> do you want to give one more question, Tori? Um, you know, I think Jeff did a pretty good job of addressing a lot of these in his talk. And some of them are more how-to questions. So actually, you know what I'm going to say is some of these might be better one-on-one -on -one questions. So what we'll do now, because we're almost at a time, is say goodbye to Jeff, but encourage you to follow him over to his Instagram Live and some of the more how-to questions that you put in the chat box. Follow him over and ask him where Jeff can explain them in a little bit more detail and take his time talking about it. But oh, thank you so God. much for joining us today. Thank you, Jeff. This was awesome. Very much appreciate it. Very much. I enjoyed it. It's great to have you. That was awesome. I'm now inspired to go and try out some of his 3D warehouse materials. Yeah, all my models that are just white that I took, so those, oh, they're so pristine. Now they just look boring. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, thanks, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, really. Thank for you. Real, for real, thank you. And thank all of you for joining us this week. We hope that you'll come back next week when we'll be talking to inventor Izzy Swan. That's going to be fun. He's going to. Yeah, it is. Not sure what he's going to show, but I'm really looking forward to it. <laughs> so am I. So make sure you come on back for episode number three. And in the meantime, head on over to Instagram. Jeff's live link is down at the bottom of your screen right now. Yeah. And remember, stock imagery inside of SketchUp, stock textures are nice, but to get the good ones, you got to go to Home Depot. And if they look at you weird, just say Jeff said it was okay. <laughs> You've been given permission. That's right. See you guys next week. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to come back next week when we talk to inventor Izzy Swan. To keep the fun going, hop over to Jeff's Instagram now to chat with him live. And thank you for watching the Fireside Chat series.